My name is Brian and today I'm going to talk about how to design a UV filter for your saltwater fish tank. This may also be applicable to your freshwater tank or your pond uh, and there may be other systems that you want to deploy one of these to. Um, the reason that I'm designing my own system is that when you get into a larger tank or a larger system such as mine, the cost uh, begins to get to what I call crazy. Um, it's about $70 worth of parts to build something that would commercially sell for um, $700 to $1,000 and probably not be sized uh, accurately. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about what a UV filter is, just in case anybody isn't on the same page with me. So a UV filter is a container with an inlet and an outlet that has a UV light source inside it. And the UV light source emits ultraviolet light and the ultraviolet light kills life forms that pass through in the water column. Now, I could go into a lot of the design and if you're interested in, in why things are sized the way they are, I highly recommend uh, Peter Escobol's book. It's uh, Aquatic Systems Engineering by P.R. Escobol and this is a fantastic book. It's been out of print for a little while so it's a little hard to find. Um, but I'm going to give you the details of what you need to know from this book. But if you want to know why the details are what they are, then I recommend reading this book. So there are probably three critical factors in this. One is how many gallons per hour do I need to run through my system? Another is what dosage of light do I need to kill whatever it is that I want to kill? And um, this is typically classified into three, three categories, level three, level two, and level one. Uh, level three will knock down algae and it's generally regarded as 10,000 milliwatts per second or milliwatt seconds. It's a cumulative effect so 5,000 milliwatts for two seconds is the same as 10,000 milliwatts for one second. Don't get too caught up in this you just need to be aware of this. To kill everything except viruses, you need about 50,000 milliwatt seconds. And then if you want to kill everything, viruses are really hard to kill. Um, some of the viruses take 200 and 400,000 milliwatt seconds. So you just need to know that viruses equals a lot. So most systems are going to be a level 3 or a level 2. If you're doing a level 3, this would be for like a pond or a freshwater system where you just want to kill the algae and, and keep it knocked down. Um, level 2 would be what we're going to build and this is for a saltwater system where I want to kill algae and then I want to kill free floating life forms that um, might be circulating through the water. Once you know what your dosage is, that will determine how many watts your light bulb is. And um, I'm going to give you some very quick guides to this. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what your system is. My system is a 500 gallon system. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go for 100% sterilization because I don't want to kill everything. I just want to knock the stuff down. And um, you're not going to run all of the water through here all the time because if you did that, A, it would be expensive. And, um, you know, what you're really trying to do is achieve 90 to 99% sterilization. So the easiest way to get this is to divide 500 by 1.2 and two and that will give you the range of what your flow per hour needs to be. So 
if I flow 250 gallons per hour to 400 gallons per hour in my system, I will achieve a 90 to 99% sterilization rate. And for my tank, if you divide this by 9, 9 gallons for each watt, you will come out with 55 watts. And this is what's required to give the appropriate dosage. So if you adjust this for a different system, you'll get numbers that work for you. Um, this is based on turning the water over twice, or filtering all of the water in the tank twice per day. And um, so for my system, 250 to 400 gallons an hour through this filter at 9 gallons a watt. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that this range right here lines up perfectly with my protein skimmer. So what I plan to do is run my water through my protein skimmer and then through my UV filter uh, to eliminate uh, a set of pumps. So I want to talk a little bit about the design. Um, the bulbs come in two different um, form factors. One form factor is a long fluorescent bulb and the other form factor is a U-shaped bulb with pins for electricity. Um, this bulb is typically enclosed. And this is this is really really common in the commercial units. And so you have something like this. And that's probably 80% of the systems that are on the market. The problem the problem I see with this particular design is it leaks here invariably they leak there and this may not be a convenient place um, and then you've got to figure out how to mount the thing so uh, to me this design is is a problem and most of the commercial units are sized for um, a level three systems knock down algae and they're advertised as a level two system to knock down um, bacteria um, and sometimes they'll even do the packaging to make it look like it's a level one system that'll kill anything in the water when the reality is all it's going to do is kill the algae so um, you know there's a couple issues with this uh, to do this right you need a quartz tube and a quartz tube um, absorbs some of the radiation and it reduces the efficiency of the bulb by approximately 15 percent and that's that 15 percent number comes from Escobar's book and it, and it was based on uh, research done by General Electric who was one of the companies that that really brought this bulb to market so what I'm using is this system and I'll show you why here in a second um, before I get to that, I want to talk a little bit about pipe size. Um, the, there's a very specific dimension that works well for sterilization, and that's a 3-inch pipe. Anything bigger, and the radiation doesn't quite make it. Anything smaller, and um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work real well. So what research has shown is that a 3-inch diameter pipe is the perfect size for sterilizing with UV light. So what I plan to do is put together a U-shaped section of 3-inch pipe with an inlet and an outlet. And the reason I'm going to do this is that your PVC fittings have a little lip here and it turns out that if you use 3 inch pipe you can take a um, I think it's a uh, yeah it's a 3 inch um, plug that screws in and you just turn it upside down and drop it in here so that's exactly what I'm going to do and that's going to hold my lights and then I will have a bulb It sticks down like this and I'm going to use a pair of them. 
The reason I'm using a pair of them is that I can get 36 watt bulbs. I can get a pair of them for $19 on eBay. I can get these electrical connectors that, that hook up to these bulbs for, I think it was 4 or $5 online somewhere, plus 4 or $5 in shipping. And I can get a ballast that will drive two bulbs very easily. And in fact, I got the ballast for 5 or $6 on eBay. So the whole thing winds up costing me $60 because PVC pipe is cheap. And I'm using inexpensive bulbs. And if you think about it, one of, the, one of the arguments that goes on online is, oh, you can't have the glass in direct contact with water. I would say, why? Glass is sealed. That's why there's a light inside of it. If the, if there was, the glass was not sealed, the special gas that's inside would leak out and you wouldn't have a light. So um, you cannot use direct contact with cold water. Um, Escobar says it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 60 degrees. I don't know. You know, if my coral tank gets to 60 degrees, I've got bigger problems than whether or not my UV sterilizer works. So my tank will be about 80 degrees. That's perfect. Um, so this system will, it, this is basically how I'm going to do it. And um, these will not actually be... So as the water comes in, it will go through here and it will be sterilized by the UV light. Um, the electrical wiring will attach to the top here. The ballast will be somewhere over here. And it'll be a plug. Um, and uh, essentially this is a low flow, inexpensive uh, solution. I'm using these bulbs because you can get a pair of 36 watt bulbs for um, $20 on eBay with free shipping. Um, PVC is cheap. Ballast is about $5. The uh, sockets are a couple dollars a piece. So the whole thing is like a $60, $70 project. Um, this is rugged. It's simple. It's easy. Um, you could run this with a pump or if you could do what I'm going to do and I'll, I'll kind of draw in the bigger picture. I'm going to have a protein skimmer my little air bubbles. So water will come in from my aquarium, go down through my protein skimmer, come up and go into my UV filter, go out, and then this will lead to my sump, um, which has a pump on it. And, and that's kind of the whole cycle. Um, the tank is above here, so as the water drains down, it will readily go through the protein skimmer. And as long as this is lower than that, it'll go through here. As long as this is higher than that, it'll flow. It'll it'll flow its way down, and it won't cost me anything extra to run. Um, this is what I would call intelligent design for a saltwater system. There's no reason to run extra pumps. Um, when you get into a larger tank, y you can easily spend $100, $150 a month on electricity if you use the wrong components. If you use the right components, you can reduce the impact uh, that your tank has on your monthly electric bill. Um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. One last thing I'd like to point out is please work safely. Keep in mind that you're working with UV light, which can damage the skin. It can cause cancer, it can cause blindness. Don't look at this. Um, you're working with electricity. It's high voltage here and low voltage here. Both of them can hurt you. Electricity plus UV light plus salt water could be a deadly combination. So what I would encourage is work safely, work smart, and if you're not sure what you're doing, find someone to help you who does know what you're doing. Even worst case, if you had to pay an electrician to do your wiring, you're still going to come out way ahead. So it's really important to be safe. Um, this will be plugged into a GFI outlet so that if there is a current leak, it will um, cut off the power to it. So again, thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.